So my ego, and I think everybody else's ego, gets in the way of them making money substantially in their way. I was, the, the easiest way that I know to, to make money in the long run is to invest in your skill set that you already do well and that you're making money from, right? Like that's the sort of first principle is you look to see what you're already making money from if you have a job or, you know, you're going to school, you invest in that particular thing, right? Like you're becoming an architect. So you continue to invest more in architecture, for example, right? You invest in that particular skill set and the job that you're at and do job hopping. All of those particular things are really important. And then... And then from there, um, you take whatever money that you make and you invest 10 to 15, 20%, maybe even 25%. That would be really extreme. But, you know, some sort of arbitrary amount. So my family, we try to try to aim for 15% of everything that we make into index funds and mutual funds that have been around for a long time. What are those? Just big company that have been around for a long, long time. And if you were to do this, um, you would have a lot of money, right? And what I think in terms of my head, the whole reciprocity project has been really fascinating because to some degree, it's this like ego thing, building a platform. You know, it's very much an ego thing. And I think about that as like, hey, this is actually a terrible use of my resources now that I know Right. And, and I reflect on it. I think like a lot of that is just ego at the end of the day. Right. Of thinking in my head that I could do this better than, you know, IBM or, you know, any of these sort of large organizations. Entrepreneurship in, in, in of itself and innovation of itself is very much an ego game where you're thinking in your head that you're better than everybody else. Right, that's ultimately what you're you've decided that if there is a market that's not being served, that there is a problem that exists, and you are the one that's gonna stand up and change this particular thing, and that you're better than everybody else. So ultimately there is this ego play that's happening that you're thinking that you are somehow amazing for this particular job and this particular thing. And I think about how interesting that actually is um that it's such an ego play at the end of the day it's so much like i can do this i'm better than everybody else and ultimately um you know you you probably should decide that that if you're not right like you're not that good as everybody else a rational sort of seeing person right rationality we talk a lot about rationality uh, let's study this it would mean that you would never do anything like that you would never go and start something you would never try anything because uh, look at it you would sort of think this is ridiculous why would i ever do anything like that uh, you know i can invest and, and do much better off in the long run. The, and, and, you know, here's the thing, right? So what I'm talking about is sort of your thoughts and beliefs about risk and how you can control risk and uncertainty. Uh, in general, you got to take a step back and, and realize. I think if you were to look at this, this idea of, you know, risk and, and uncertainty. Um, and what you're thinking about is that you can, you can beat the market always, right? Like that's, that's the logic is that you're smarter than everybody else, that you can do this thing. And you're looking at, you know, this problem that doesn't exist right now. And you're presuming the reason why somebody hasn't solved this particular problem is because everybody else is stupid and and you're not, right? Ultimately, and that you have the skill set or you'd be able to assemble resources to tackle this larger problem, and that you're intelligent enough to actually do this. 
um, and you're sort of neglecting the uncertainty of all of this, that there is a lot of problems that you're going to experience along the way. And I, I think it's, it's really fascinating when I reflect on my own sort of silliness with this. Is, yeah, it actually is just, um, you know, you ultimately at the end of the day, you think that you're smarter than everybody else. And your best bet is almost always to invest in index funds and mutual funds. And yet when I say that, when I say invest in just big companies, almost everybody says, you know, or just invest in the index. Um, almost everybody says, ah, I can do better than that. You can pick, you know, um, when when you look at this, when you talk to, to people it's like almost like a dirty word and it doesn't matter of who you actually talk to where they presume that they're better. Um, you know, in the, in, in the humility that it actually takes to say, eh, I'm not that great. Um, and I'd be better off to do that and not bet the market, not bet on anything you want to, you want to do it better than everybody else that you think you're somehow better. Um, you know, A, at the sort of stage of picking stocks, everybody thinks that they can pick stocks in the company. Man, you're just reading the freaking news. <laughs> everybody can read the freaking news, and they're so supercomputers that can do it much faster than you can. Um, and yet, you somehow think that you could beat the market. And then, you know, if you're going to assemble and build something entrepreneurial, um, you know, like the Reciprocity Project, you think that you're just, you know, in your Every, everybody else is like they're they're foolish they're not seeing this and really you're the fool right ultimately you're the damn fool that's sitting there um doing this particular thing because you think that you're you're somehow better and it's fascinating i think i think it's like it's just fascinating as a as a as a thought experiment the sort of foolishness that goes on behind with everybody, right? Like nobody wants to say, so what is the problem, right? What is going on? You're saying when, when you, when you, when you get an index fund and you do this sort of general strategy of just take 15%, throw it in an index fund, um, of everything that you need, you are saying, I'm going to take some of my hard earned cash, invest it in an, in, in the average. Right. What what people don't realize is that average is still pretty spectacular, but um, you're just investing in the average. And when you hear that, we are such a culture, um, you know, maybe in different countries, there's variability, but we're still really creatures of, of habit. We're still such a culture to want to do the best. And if you're not making, you know, if you're now making a hundred thousand percent per year, whatever, some stupid astronomical thing, if you're not betting and, and putting your money into Bitcoin or whatever, that's shooting up, then you're the fool that you're, you're kind of silly by doing this. You're not smart enough. And if you know that the other logic is that all of those people that did that were just damn lucky, right? They were, they were foolish and silly and made a bunch of mistakes. And they shouldn't have actually done that. Um, you know, it's fascinating, I think. And one of the comments that I heard recently that's really interesting that um, I really didn't think about, right, is that, okay, if you're the average and you start beating, like, if there's companies out there that are really beating the average for a long time, right, you're making 40, 50% returns for a long time, you start getting um, people start paying attention to you and regulators and, you know, police officers, all these people start paying attention to you and all of the enforcement starts paying attention to you. And they start asking, you know, why is this happening? This is really strange. And there's perhaps something iffy that's sketchy that's going on. And we probably should look into it and, and investigate it. You know, it's fascinating 
that we somehow think we're smarter than those police officers, those uh, institutions that are set up to sort of make sure that that doesn't happen. And then everything kind of goes on the average uh, more or less for a long time. If you make more, if you are making 20% for more than 10 years um, per year, you're going to get attention by by people. Um, and it's probably unwanted attention that people are going to be very curious with this. Right. And they're going to be sketched out with what you're actually doing. And you're likely sketched out being like, hey, um, you know, police officers are going to start looking at you. The regulators are going to start looking at you if you paid, you know, 20 percent per year for. For a long time, they're going to start questioning. it. So your expectation should be, yeah, you know, what about 10 percent per year is is reasonable and that's what the stock market grows at that's that's still really freaking fast because you're looking at the best companies in the world um you know that are on these stock markets often and that's what they kind of make right like that is that's the general average um and yet and yet you know that sort of our minds we think that if you don't do that if you're if we need to make somehow more than that and so I should be able to take, you know, a thousand dollars today, and I should be able to have, I don't know, twenty uh, five million dollars in ten years. And if I haven't done that, then I'm a big. <laughs> it's hilarious. I think it's just hilarious in terms of how our mind plays these games. Um, that is spectacular, by the way, to actually have that, um, to be able to do that. That would be so strange to do that, uh, that, that you should question it, right? In general, what you should expect is take that thousand dollars and in seven years, right? That's what the, the best companies in the stock market are grown as rule of 72, which is about seven years, I think it's 72 months versus that about 10% per, um, per, per annum will get you in about, um, that thousand dollars at about seven years will be worth two thousand dollars that's that's funny right um so the reciprocity project um you know if i was to look at the investments per se in the platform it is far below that man i've, I've lost a lot of money um but but at the same time i realized that this is a long run game Right. So if it's not there in seven years, um, it's still not like I, I, I'm still on well in the game. Right. Like it's not um, it's it's not fool party at this moment to sort of think about that. And yet we do think like after seven years, um, seven years is a long time. People start like questioning it and thinking like, oh, you're so silly. And ultimately you should be thinking in terms of you know, 30 years to give yourself enough time um, to sort of sort things out and figure out what makes money, what doesn't, all those kind of things. And at that point, right, so so you take a thousand bucks, right, and I should be making two thousand bucks after seven years. Um, so let's say, you know, over the course of over the course of, of you know, and, and, and what I'm thinking about here is that that compound, right? So you take that thousand bucks to, and, and in seven years, 2000, 14 years, it is 4,000. In uh, 21 years, it is, what is that? That's um, 8,000. In 28 years, it's $16,000. That's a pretty darn good return over the course of 28 years so why not expect that right like to go from a thousand to um because well did they say it was sixteen thousand dollars i can't remember what it was but some some amount that's actually pretty good right if you're to sort of look at that that is like a uh and it's you know a sixteen thousand percent return right is that right yeah um 
you know, you've, you've 16 folds your money in the course of 28 years. It's pretty good. But we think 28 years, uh, that's foolish to do that, right? Like that is a mistake. So our, our your bet, um, so always think about this. It's going to take a freaking long time. Everything takes a freaking long time to do. Um, you're likely never going to beat the market. And so you have to think about other reasons, other ways to do things that are entrepreneurial for me. Um, yeah, I know that there is some hubris that's there. It's called hubris. Sort of, I think I'm better than everybody else. Um, there's definitely some of that that's going on in my head. That I think I could do this better than everybody else. Everybody else is foolish. Um, but at the same time, there are other things that get me to get going other than sort of financial return. It's I'm exploring, I'm learning things. It might be a giant mess. Um, you know, there's many other things that are going on that I'm doing that um, allows me to sustain that. And if it doesn't work out in this particular area, well, at least I tried. And that's what I think about right, is at least I tried. And the goal for me, um, and I think the goal should be everybody if they're thinking about entrepreneurial ventures or investing or whatever, like in that particular area, is to not to break the bank, right? Like if I, if I, that's why I suggest that sort of 10 to 20% of everything that you ever make to invest in index funds, because if it goes down next year, you still can have a good life and it's still fine in your life. I can afford to lose um, over the course of, of my life if I invest a portion of everything that I make in the reciprocity project. Um, and it goes and disappears. Well, that's just a bunch of you know, vacations and pizzas and things like that that I passed up on to do something that I think is interesting and curious and nobody else is doing. I think we're going to take that chance. I think I'm going to look at that. Uh, that allows me to do this and I'm not going to go bankrupt. Uh, I'm going to live a nice life. And um, my family is going to be able to do things. We've had to, you know, maybe we don't live in as big of a house as as others. Um, but I'm okay with that. Our life is much more simpler. We're doing something that I think has other implications other than financial return um, that are that are very important in my life. Um, and, you know, at the ultimate end of the day, I think about this is I did this thing. So imagine you did, you were, the one person that tried something in the 1970s and you did it for a long time. Um, you can still say that, right? When you're old and crusty and I'm at my deathbed, you know, I'm 100 and 140 years old or whatever it is. I'm at my deathbed. I'll say, well, I tried that and I did it. And I really took an effort. I spent decades building this thing and it didn't work, but that's okay. And I think, a lot of things in our lives make no ra rational financial sense that are important, that need to be done. But it's up to you to sort of figure out how are you going to manage this so you can do it and sustain the life, right? I think there's a lot of projects like that where I see people doing cool, freaking cool things. And... There's no rational sense to it. It's not a financial thing, but they do it because they just love it. I think that's the same thing with me, with the reciprocity project. Yeah, I may never get a financial return from this. And my wife will probably think I'm nuts um, for the rest of my life. But I think this is important. I think it it, it is essential to humanity to do things that are not ne necessarily because of financial returns. Uh, otherwise, you would never do it. 
Otherwise, people would never start and do cool things that makes no sense, that uh, begin the journey of something that's bigger and better. That IBM, that um, General Electric, that um, you know Price Waterhouse Coopers, whatever you know, all of those things started someplace. And why not be here and now? And this is the place where it's going to start. And I think about that. And it all started, Disney all started. I love the statement that, that Walt said, it all started with a dream. And I deeply believe in that. And you need to figure out how to sustain a life so that you're okay but you can build your dream along the way. And we often think that we have to go 100%, but it's not true. You can find the life, you can find the level, you can, you can mess around with ratios in your life that allow you to not necessarily be fully maximized, allow you to live a life and do things where you build a dream for yourself, where you can create your own Disney world and change the world. All right. Take care. Have a wonderful day.